Well, thanks for coming again today, folks. I can see that we're almost full with a thousand people. So I do appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedules to come spend time here. What we'll discuss today is studio, a little bit of an overview. People are concerned about black and white uh, with uh, uh, the folks at Nick not supporting, or Google, I should say, not supporting the Nick suite anymore. Obviously, it can still be used, but Topaz has a great black and white tool. So we'll talk, cover that briefly. Uh, some people, actually a lot of people are doing infrared. I'm doing a lot more of it myself. We'll introduce a, a way to convert infrared in studio. Clarity has always been a favorite tool of mine. We're going to make sure you understand where that is and how great it still is. And it's actually improved in the studio. Uh, and then impression most recently is now in studio as well. Um, and part of that suite. And then, uh, with time, we might do a little bit of texture effects just to get people excited about that again, because it's still one of the best tools they've ever come out with. So without further ado, the interface has changed a little bit since they first come out. That's one of the things I love about Topaz is they're always listening to your feedback. So please give feedback. They listen. We now have adjustments in a nice tidy area up here in the top right. And if I click on adjustments, these are the adjustments I have that I can make on any image. The top part are what comes with the free studio. Again, remember, if you want to get studio to try it and you haven't yet, it's free. And these adjustments here will be part of it. The ones down here, well, I should say these at the top and then image layer, that's part of it. All of these are the pro adjustments here uh, underneath this first line. And those are what you would pay an additional fee for. You can buy them a la carte or you can buy them as a group. Um, Heath will talk about the best way to handle that. They've tidied up how to purchase that as a group uh, all at once and then pay a reduced fee each time they might come out with a new pro adjustment. We'll cover that at the end. Just know that when you, you can see these adjustments here when you click on them, but you won't have sliders that you can use to make those adjustments. So by paying for the pro adjustment, it opens up all of the sliders is essentially what's happening. And then as you open up uh, an adjustment layer, this plus sign is a mask and we'll spend some time. So there's a mask for each layer you might want to adjust. Um, over on the left side, it asks you the question up at the top, you know, what would you like to do? If you don't like these, uh, this particular look of the interface, click up here on the very top left, it condenses it and you can still see, so you can have your effects and now you're gonna see only your effects show over here, or if you want to do like clarity workflow, it's essentially all this is doing is it's setting you up with a preset on the right side of the tools that make up in this case clarity. So this is a way that you can operate and do basic adjustments. It's gonna put just basic adjustment tools on the right side and so forth. If you don't wanna see any of those, click the arrow, they go away and now you're back to the, the normal interface that you're used to before. Down in the bottom left here are some of the common tools that you might use like crop, heel, lens adjustment, masking. And this mask is an overall mask for the entire session that you're doing, whereas the, the masks over here with the plus sign are for each individual layer. Uh, and down here's the film strip. To make things a little faster, I've gone ahead and dropped all of these images in that I'd like to, to speak about. So. I have a ton to cover today. I really would like to try to get it all in. So I'm going to go maybe a little faster than I have in the past. Not fast enough that I'll lose you because I do have feedback that it needs to be at a good pace so that you can grasp it. A couple of things. Remember that these are recorded and because it's recorded, you'll be able to you know watch it again at a later date. Um, so fear not, you can come back and, and refresh your memory as to what I might have spoken about. So I'm going to go ahead, bow down at the bottom right here, look at this arrow and <clears throat> go ahead and reset to where there's nothing there. Oh, one other thing, way at the bottom right here, there's an unlimited undo and redos, which is wonderful. So if you make a mistake, you can undo back three or four steps, whatever you need to do, there's unlimited steps. And there's customization of presets and so forth. And those are some of the things we'll talk about as we go through. So first, uh, Topaz Studio is a raw editor now. That's new for Topaz. They would not, heretofore, they had not done um, raw editing. So the files I have here are raw files and this looks rather flat. Uh, and so let's go ahead and tackle the first basic thing that we might do is studio. And you can either go to adjustments and get the basic adjustment or they've made it easy. The common ones that you wanna use are here. 
the paradigm is a little different with studio. You don't have a black point and a white point, and so it, you have to to rethink a little bit how you're going to do your basic adjustments. Think about the shadow as setting a black point. Think about the highlight as more of setting a white point. But there's there's a a fairly complicated algorithm going on in the background uh, to make sure that you're not crushing your darks or shadows or not blowing out your highlights. And so you're gonna use those two to set those dark tones and, and then open up the bright tones. Clarity is a little different than the clarity we'll be talking about, but that starts to bring some detail. And now you're gonna to need to go down to something like saturation to bring back the color that was missing. And so here we are, if I click anywhere on the image and hold, that I'll see the original. If I let go, that is exactly what I remember seeing. This is, image was made out in the Palouse, one of my absolute favorite places to bring workshops. So that's a, a an intended use for Topaz Studio, does a really good job with a couple of quick slider adjustments. What did I do again? Just brought the exposure down a little bit, clarity up a little bit, which is adding localized detail or contrast actually, the shadow slider. It's not like a shadow on hider, uh, highlight slider and other programs where you would want to open up the shadows. It does do that. But in this case, you're going to be pulling it to the left more frequently than you are to the right. And highlights, you're actually going to be bringing up to the right. But notice in the histogram, it's not blowing out my highlights. It's not blocking up my shadows. It's doing a great job of just giving us a, a really good conversion on that raw file. Let's go to the next one. Move right along. Here's another Palouse image. Again, it looks flat as most would expect coming from a raw file. So now let's go over here to the right side and we'll look at my effects. And what you can do is you can create and you'll see that I have, I've created a Palouse landscape preset. So how did I do that? I simply just came over here to the and created a basic adjustment. So I'll go back and default to nothing. If you wanted to come in here and get a basic adjustment, do the same thing we just did. Add some clarity, shadow, highlight, and then we add some of that saturation to bring that color back. Okay, let's say that's what we liked. At the bottom here, you can create a preset. So bottom right, there's a stack with a little plus sign on it. Click on that, name that effect, whatever you want it to be. And now it'll appear over here just like mine. And now you can simply click on that. Really helpful if you've been to the Palouse, like in this situation, and you do a little bit of work in your adjustments and you say, oh, I love that. But you took 30 or 40 of that same scene, different compositions, but in essentially the same light, you can create that, that preset and now click on that for every one of those images. But recognize that even though I've clicked on that, I can go here and can see what the sliders were. And if I say, yeah, it's a little more than I want on that particular image, you can tweak it and make a subtle adjustment. Let me add another adjustment, and this is one of the things that I absolutely adore. The dehaze, I find, for my taste anyways, is much better in the Topaz Studio than it is in Lightroom or Photoshop. Lightroom and Photoshop works fine, and I've used it a lot, but I have, I'll show you in the next image where I was struggling a little bit to get the look I wanted, and when I brought it into dehaze here, it, it took care of it and made it just what I was hoping it would be. But here's how this would work. And let's introduce a couple new concepts as we go through this. So here's my dehaze slider, does a beautiful job. And be careful, you can overdo this. But I like what it's doing, let's say, in the foreground, but it's still leaving that background a little bit hazy. Not a problem. Just go ahead and hit another adjustment. Go ahead and get dehaze again. And this time, I'm not going to look in the front or the foreground of my image. I'm only going to look in, in the background of my image. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the strength slider again for dehaze. It's overdoing it in the foreground. But remember, I told you there's a mask for each one of these layers. Now I can click this mask. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and invert the mask. Remember, white reveals. So if I move this slider, it's going to reveal everything that's being adjusted with this dehaze adjustment. If I hit the invert of this mask, it's going to fill it with black. Now nothing is being adjusted. But look, I have these tools. I have a brush. I have a spot tool. I have a gradient tool. I can mask based on color, based on luminosity. I can then adjust that mask to fine tune the feathering of that mask and so forth. In this case, 
it would make sense to just get a gradient tool. If I fill that mask or invert it with black, then you need to take this slider and stop painting with black. Obviously, you need to paint with white. So that makes a lot more sense. So white reveals, right? Black conceals. So now that adjustment, now it'll make more sense. Now that's happening in the top. Now you can see it a little bit hazy. And now if I click it on again, you can see that that last dehaze adjustment has just been applied as evidenced by the map to the top section only. Remember the white reveals, black conceals. So let me just, because I've, I may have just lost a few of you, let me just reset this. Uh, we started out with a white mask. I just wanted to affect the top. You could do it either way. I, my preference is to go ahead and put in black in the mask. And now I've picked a gradient tool and now I need to make sure to paint with white with that gradient tool. The default is set to black. So I pick this slider over here, or you can click on one of these boxes. And now I can make these lines closer together. Whoops, I just flipped them, sorry about that. Or further apart. I can place it wherever I want to place it. I keep doing that, I apologize. And now, now you can see where the black is, it's concealed or revealed, or I can flip it upside down and now the top is showing the adjustment and now anything below it is not. So that's a great tool. Or if you didn't wanna do that, you can just use a brush. And in this case, I'll make the brush a little bit bigger. Down here, I can adjust my brush, make it harder or softer brush. And in this case, I, with a white mask, I would now paint with black and I would paint in where I would like that final dehaze adjustment just in that background, and it's going to put it there. Or in this case, it's gonna remove it, remove it from there. I'm sorry, backwards again. So it'll, it'll remove it from up there, so I should have painted in the bottom. Golly, isn't that always the way it goes? So let's do that again. I'll, let me go to back to my normal workflow, that's what I should do, and get a brush and paint with white. And now if we paint, it's going to put it where I want it to. Much better. There we go. Got it? So just remember, the key to remember with masking is black conceals, white reveals. And if you choose to fill that mask with black, you're going to want to paint with a white brush. If that mask is white, you paint with a black brush to either remove or, or re, uh, conceal or, or, or make it revealed. Okay. So now let's go to the next thing I wanted to discuss is can you, a lot of people ask at the end, can you use Lightroom? Well, of course, absolutely. You can use Lightroom all you want. So let me drag that in. And here is uh, an image I made out in Glacier recently where we struggled with a little bit of smoke from all the plethora of fires that are going on. So there's my raw file, pretty boring. Here's what I did. I did a slight crop. I did a lot of adjustments in Lightroom. You can see a lot of adjustments, adding a fair amount of clarity and even dehaze down at the bottom but I wasn't real happy with what I was getting. So I did is this, I right clicked on it. And this is important. If you're going to be, want to round trip what you do in Topaz Studio, make sure to open it from within Lightroom. So I'm gonna right click, edit in Topaz Studio. And we'll do that. I'm gonna move this out of the way as, as that's going. And we should see this pop into Studio here. It takes a second uh, to do that. Uh, and by the way, you're going to get that little dialog box where it's asking, do you want to edit with Lightroom adjustments? You do. You want it to apply those adjustments. Um, now, when I work on this image in studio, as long as I stay on this image, anything I do to it, once I'm done, if I go to the bottom right and hit save, it's going to round trip that back to Lightroom with all the adjustments that I've now done in studio. Um, if you do something outside of that image, uh, you know, for instance, if I wanted to do a multiple exposure and take this boat image, which I wouldn't, and drag and drop it onto this, uh, or if I would drag the, the mountain name on top of the boat image, now that will not round trip. It's got to be the same image that you open from Lightroom into Studio needs to be the image that you save back. So make sure if you're doing multiple exposures or something like that, that's what you're doing. You're round tripping the image that you brought in from. Lightroom. Okay, so what did I do here? I decided that I wanted to see what dehaze would do on this image that I really liked from Glacier. So let's see. Just 
just a little bit here and I think it makes a tremendous difference. I still want it to affect some of the smoky area in the back. So I'm gonna do just what we were talking about before. I'm going to go ahead and get another dehaze adjustment, click on that. And in this case, I'm gonna put a mask in there. I'm gonna hit a brush tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and leave it white because, and then paint with black because I want, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it uh, as a mask and, and paint. Uh, with a black brush to bring in the dehaze that I want. Hang on, let's go here. Yeah, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to invert it is what I'm going to do. So it's not affecting that. And I'm going to paint with my white brush. I apologize, guys. I've been doing this for a long time and I get it confused every time. <laughs> and you can see I really do. So that's what I want to do. I don't want to show that adjustment on the whole picture, I just wanna be able to paint it in. So once again, I inverted the mask to black so it's concealing the adjustment. And now it allows me with a white brush to paint in a little bit more of the dehaze in the background. Let's see what that does. There you go. So now you can see that, let me make it really strong so you can really see what's going on. It's kind of overdoing it there, or some might like that. You can do that to taste. And I need to tidy up that. What's really good, and you want to leave this on, is when you're painting with the brush, this edge aware can be on or off. I would encourage you to leave it on. Notice in the mask, it's doing a really good job of understanding the difference between the red circle and the green circle. And so what is that? The, when you're painting, I was careful to try to not go outside of the red circle where those mountain tips are. And basically there's a feather that's being created between the inside red and the outside green. And you can make that feather hard or soft, right? So I'm now I made it a, a little bit harder edge there. You can make this bigger or smaller and you can paint more precisely if you want to. But what I like that I'm able to do now is, is a global dehaze. And then here I was able to, with a very specific mask, add just a little bit more dehaze to this distant mountain area here. So hopefully that introduces you to a little bit of why I really like the dehaze tools and the capability of the masking that I have within, specifically the masking with the edge aware capability in these tools, the edge aware. And you'll notice even when I did the gradient filter, um, when you do that gradient, it is still using edge aware if you want to turn it on. So even though you're pulling a straight line gradient across the image, it's going to sense the mountain that's in the way there and do its best to remove that from the selection that you're making. Really powerful masking tools. Topaz has always had those and it's the same here again. They do a great job um, with especially the masking and edge aware technology. Okay, let's move on here. So I want it to be clear too, Topaz has a plethora of presets. One of the things they have is a social community where people are making presets and you can go out and download those and look at those and you can make them ad infinitum. Uh, and by the way, you can share your things on Facebook. If you go up to uh, file, share on Facebook is really easy. So once you're done with the photograph and you wanna share your work, they have built that into the interface as well. But here, if I come over, once again, the, the default would look like this, and I would want to go down to my effects, you'll see that I, in fact, created a Palouse truck effect, just like we were speaking about before. Now, what did that do? Those, these are the tools that I put there. So it's common for me to say, hey, I've got a landscape. It's similar to what I created a preset for. Uh, and I click on it, I say, hey, that's not bad. And then I can go over here and I can say, well, let's see what I did with the tone curve. Ah, I made a subtle S shape. Well, you know, I wish I had made that a little darker. You can then modify. So uh, the point of the, this particular image is to let you know that you don't have to accept what a preset is. That's just a starting point. You should then feel comfortable to then modify that to be whatever you wish. So for instance, um, let's say I liked what this was, but I wish that sky was a little darker. Well, there's all sorts of ways that you can adjust that. In this case, again, I would do a lot of what we were doing. I might go in and get a tone curve. I might say, hey, that sky is up here in this area. I'll just bring that sky down. And then I think I'll go to my mask 
and I will get a brush and I'm going to invert my mask again. Where'd my brush go? Invert my mask. I'll paint with white and I'll start, you know, putting in that darker sky that I just created here. All right, make my brush a little bit bigger. And again, I've, I've got edge aware on so I can modify the preset I had based on the image that I'm being presented with. And you notice I'm going into the trees pretty, pretty firmly here, but it's going to do a great job. Look at the mask. It sees those trees and it's creating a mask based on understanding that I want that gray sky to be darkened. And now I can come in and adjust that even further. And it's only the sky that's being adjusted at this point, right? So a preset is just that. It's a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a starting point. You should feel comfortable in going somewhere else with that. Okay, let's move on. Like I said, I'm trying to go a little bit uh, and cover as many things as we can. The newest addition to Studio is uh, Impression, which is a wonderful painterly tool. But there are some other things you can do with some of the basic adjustments. So let me just pull my notes up to make sure I'm going to do the right thing. Okay, let's make sure, because we went over pretty quickly in the beginning, bottom left here of this interface, just above the film strip, is our healing tool. So if I click healing, again, up here on the top right, it shows that I am the healing brush. I can make that brush bigger or smaller here. And I want to get rid of this water droplet that's right there. I would probably do that first. And there we go. It gets rid of the water droplet, come up here at the top right, and hit done. All right. So let's just do, how would we attack this? I would say, let's do some basic adjustments on this beautiful lily. Now we got it looking reasonably good. Let's bring some saturation up. And so with a couple of, what'd that take me? Eight seconds. We went from a flat looking image to something looks, that looks pretty good. If I wanted to, I can add another adjustment, maybe called brightness contrast. The contrast in here is going to be very aggressive really, really aggressive. So be very careful and use it gingerly. And I might uh, open up the brightness or take the brightness down just a skosh. Great. Skosh is a very technical term, by the way. And then one of my favorites is precision contrast. Precision contrast is essentially, well, not essentially, it is what clarity used to be. This should be a very familiar, friendly panel. And I tend to go like this, like this, with these, this is kind of my favorite preset. So guess what I've done in the preset area here? Again, I'm looking at my precision contrast adjustment panel. I've created John Start. And that's exactly where I tend to like to be to add a little bit of con precision contrast. Let's turn this on and off of the eyeball. Not a whole lot there. It's just subtle and it's adding local contrast, but doing it in such a gentle, wonderful way. It's why when people say, what's your favorite piece of software from Topaz, it's absolutely clarity or now precision contrast. The other thing I like is if these moves, remember anytime we're doing a contrast adjustment, we can either blow out highlights or block up shadows. That's what happens when we're doing contrast adjustments. And so built right into this particular tool is the ability to open those shadows up should we need to, or rein back in those highlights in this lighting area that used to be called tone, right? So if all of a sudden you're doing some adjustments to this micro contrast and you see a little blip starting to rise up on the right side of your histogram, just come down here and rein that back in by pulling it to the left and that'll make that highlight come right back into within the, the goalpost, if you will, of your histogram. So I like to do that. I'm not gonna do any more color adjustments or saturations here. I like what this precision contrast is doing. Okay. So we can even go in here now and start to do some kind of painterly things by going into blur. So what does blur do? Let's see, we can go to diffusion. Uh, I like the diffusion and we can add, bring the strength up and add this beautiful soft glow, if you will, with this blur. So that's one thing we can do. Let's turn that on and off. It just adds kind of a soft dreamy look with diffusion. I love that. It's really yummy. Okay, let's turn that one off for a second. Let's see what else we can explore with here. Let's go to something like smudge. What does smudge do? Well, let's play and see what it does. The more I bring it up and the extent of it, you can see it's starting to create this real painterly effect. Let's turn that on and off for you. There's before. 
there's after kind of a cool tool the smudge tool and you can bring back sharpness to that uh, and so you have quite a bit of a control over the smudge tool let's get rid of that i believe there's one more yep let's go here let's go to radiance radiance uh, is a lot like topaz glow and i can bring this up and start to make it have that electrified look which is kind of cool actually but if you think that's too much another thing to add to your understanding of how studio works is every one of these adjustments has an opacity slider so i can bring the opacity down and what is that doing it's basically blending this 100 percent look it's blending that back in with the original image so now when i bring this down to 35 percent and i turn it before and after you're still getting that lovely glow effect, but it's not as in your face. It's a little more subtle and it looks like it's been tastefully applied. So lots of adjustment capabilities. We went through some uh, blur and adding a nice soft diffuse blur there. We did a smudge, we did radiance, and there's even a thing called abstraction. And what does that do? Different variations and adds almost like a simplify look is what that does so lots of capabilities for creating interesting painterly looks from for free like if you remember blur is part of the free pack you can play with that some of these others you would have to pay for the pro adjustments okay let's get a different image and move along on this impression idea so to make life a little easier, I should have created a, there we go, I created a preset prior to this so that we could save some time and not go through the adjustments. It was a basic adjustment, brightness, contrast, precision, contrast. Now, let's say I wanna add impression. Well, let's go over here so you can find it. Notice that the specialty on the bottom of this column over here on the left, that's where clarity could be found. And this is where impression, but if I were to click on these, I'm going to go ahead and do it because it's, you're going to do this and, and have the same issue that many others. Notice that I have basic adjustment, brightness, contrast, precision, contrast. Watch what happens when I hit impression. They all go away. On the right side, those all went away. And it's a big flat image that's applying impression. Well, that's because I didn't apply the image and save essentially all of those steps that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this and go back to our starting place. So if I come over here, whoops, I need to come back to my presets. My effects come down to my smoky foliage. The first thing I need to do, any work I do here before I go grab an effect from over here like impression or clarity, one of these or any preset actually, I need to make sure to save what I've done here. And the way we do that is this button called apply right down here next to duplicate and apply. When I apply this, it's going to basically, if we're a Photoshop person, it's flattening those three layers and giving me that as a starting place at this point. So now when I go and hit impression, now it keeps all of that work that I've done and it'll go and start imply, to apply the impression preset that we can find over here. So now, and by the way, they're working to make it easier to search and find, but right now it, there's a lot to look at over here. And so you'll want to explore, if you like the painterly look as I do, you'll explore through these and then you can hit the heart and make them your favorites but if you remember some like i know there's a painterly painterly let's see if i type that much we should be get there we go that's going to bring up just the ones that have painterly and i kind of liked the painterly too for this look and this is really something i do quite frequently with fall foliage images. So that's why I'm bringing this up. We're coming into the fall. You may want to consider this. This is way overdone for me. It's cool. It's not something that I'm a big fan of. So the way I use these kind of looks is I find one that I find interesting and that over time you'll figure out if I bring the opacity back a little bit, I'll get a look that I kind of like. So let me show you before and after now. So at about 30%, Here's before, 
straightforward fall foliage image. Afterwards, what I find it does, come on, there we go, pop it in. You'd have to, re and this is what I would like my image to look like. I want you to be wondering what the heck I did rather than, oh, hey, he applied, you know, uh, in pasto or something from the folks at Topaz. That's a great use of that plug. And that's not really what I'm looking for. I like the idea that it's kind of softening this foliage. It's not that crunchy leaf look. Uh, I just like what this does at a very low opacity. So recognize there's a plethora. We don't have time. We'd have to do a whole webinar just on impression. You can change these brush shapes. And when you do, it's going to change the look that's being created. Let me bring the opacity up quite a bit here so you can maybe see what some of these changes are doing. If I go to this tool, just give it a second. It takes a second. You notice that that whole painterly look changes depending on the brush that I pick. So lots of creative capabilities from within Impression, which is now built into Topaz Studio, which is the direction uh, that Topaz is going to be taking all of their wonderful plugins so that it's in one logical, tidy place for you to get them. So again, just to review, I get it to where I kind of like it, and then I bring the opacity down and blend it back in to give it more of a natural look but now it's like, what the heck did he do? I really like that. It's a little bit more vibrant colors and the leaves are not quite as crunchy looking. It's a nice soft look. And then if I wanted to, I can come up here and even do something like uh, blurs, add another layer there, go to that diffusion, add some strength to that and add this nice softness if I wanted to do that. The, it's like a box of crayons, right? You have all sorts of tools here from within studio to craft images the way you would like to. All right, let me see where I am. We're going through pretty quickly here. Uh, okay, we've done that. So how about black and white? Well, um, built into Studio is a black and white adjustment tool. So let's take a look at that. And then we'll also take a look at their excellent black and white effects too, which is a standalone here. So what would I do? I'd go into my basic adjustments. I might make this a little bit darker and lighter so down in Cuba. Uh, something like that. Let's say that we did that for our color picture. You wanna, when you're doing black and white conversions, it would be preferred if you do a great job of the color adjustment first so that the black and white tools and sliders have something to work with. And the, the better the, the quality of that picture, the better the adjustment. So now let's go in here and see what we can do with the black and white adjustment tool. Not bad, red trunks, I can make those red trunks lighter or darker. Orange is probably gonna have a subtle effect on the skin and it does. So you, all you're gonna do here is play till your heart's content. I like brightening up that background a little bit. I like bringing out this. Red's probably overdone a little bit on his face and on and on. So that it's a very basic, straightforward tool that you can work the black and white image and that's what you would do. Uh, you can affect the brightness here again from within this tool, add some detail to it, which is basically adding local structure again. That starts to look pretty good. If you start to create some artifacts, you might be working on a JPEG. You can suppress those artifacts here. Uh, and then the color sensitivity is just what it says. It's it's the strength of uh, those different colors that you're working on. You can have that be even more robust in its adjustment of those colors. So from within studio, I just wanted to spend a brief minute here and, and so we'll move on. We can do some very good basic black and white adjustments. But to me, there's a much better tool. So here we are. Uh, back still in Cuba, great car scene as there tend to be a plethora of those. All I'm going to do on this image is show you how great this precision contrast is. There's a great uh, tool called Reduce Shadow. And it's not bad right out of the gate. I mean, here's before, here's after, just with that one tool. A little bit over the top. I'm going to bring those micro contrasts because it just starts to look a, a little too HDR-ish for me. So again, I went and got a preset called Reduce Shadow, but I don't have to stay with that. I can now adjust that to be whatever I want it to be. So I've reined that in a little bit. To me, that looks fabulous just with that one adjustment. Now, let's say we need a little bit more processing horsepower. All we do is go to the top here to where it says adjustments. 
And in adjustments, I'm sorry, plugins. We go to plugins, and under plugins, what will show up is everything that you've purchased heretofore uh, before studio, right? So all of those individual standalone adjustments, and here's black and white effects too. So now what we're going to do is it's almost like with Lightroom. When you open a photograph from Lightroom with an external editor, that's all we're doing here. We're, we're using the interface for Studio to then open up the black and white effects. And when we're done with black and white effects, it's going to head and it's going to dump it back into our film strip in Studio. So if you're not familiar with this wonderful tool, you have collections that have been made over here. And if I click on the uh, little uh, grid here, it'll show me, for instance, in this tone collection, it'll quickly show me all of the different presets. And I really liked toned images like this warm tone. So I would just click on this little preview and it gives me an idea of what that will look like. Awesome, I'm a huge fan of the presets. Uh, when Nicole was still there, she did a lot of work to create these crazy good presets and cyanotypes and uh, all of these stylized collections. So have fun looking at those. But once again, recognize it's a preset that can be adjusted. So all of these things over here, you can go adjust them to be something different than what were already adjusted. One of the things that's really great that's built into black and white effects that gives you a lot more control is their wonderful Topaz Adjust, which was the heart and soul of what started the company. And again, the, the way Adjust works is it's a, think of the adaptive exposure as an auto adjust on steroids. So zero is no adjustment, a little bit of auto adjustment, a lot more, a ton of auto adjustment as I bring it all the way to the right. And then that works in conjunction with the region slider, which the further to the left I pull that slider, only the dark darks and the bright brights are being affected. If I pull it way to the right, it's affecting all of the tones in the image, and as you can see, it makes it look very grungy HDR. So what do I do? Kind of in this range is where I tend to use auto adjust to get something I think looks a little more natural. So the adaptive exposure is something that you don't find in other pieces of software. And of course, if we reset this, you don't have to use an adjustment. You can start using the colored filters and see what you like with the filters. And each of the, it's just like the filters we used to use in film days. And notice what's open here. So as I click on each of these filters, all it's doing is setting these two sliders to preset locations and creating this look. What's really, really powerful is now I can say, hey, I really like orange filter and I do, but I now can make that orange filter either stronger or less strong, a lot of control here, or I can tweak that and I can move this. So instead of six colored filters, I now have the entire hue spectrum to fine tune that global effect that I want to happen on this image and the strength of it. That's huge, that's a ton of control. And then after that, I would then get the color sensitivity. And now I'm going to adjust just the tones that are shown here. So in the red, that red car, I can make that red car darker or lighter. Okay, and so now it's only working on that tonality. It's only gonna work on the blue and make any blue tones darker or lighter in that image or cyan tones and so forth. So even more control there. And again, we have already talked about the adaptive exposure controls. You have basic controls of contrast and brightness and so forth built right in. And then you have some creative things you can do in here as well, like simplified diffusion, the things that we were just talking about in, in the studio. You can do some local adjustments. I think there's better ways to do that. I'm sure that's going to be adjusted or, or upgraded immensely when they bring this into the uh, studio platform. And then here's one that I always like to finish with when I'm speaking about texture, I'm sorry, black and white effects, this transparency. I can hit transparency, and again, I'm in the finishing touches here. And now when I open this up, I can bring this back and I can create that old world look. And look at that really crazy cool pink car. Is that kind of fun? And I can dial that back and make it look like just a little bit of color being added in. So all of that control, fear not, your black and white conversions are in good shape with 
Topaz's black and white tool, uh, black and white effects too. And you even have this cool transparency thing, which I use a ton, especially on uh, images coming out of uh, Cuba. And then I would hit OK, and that's going to simply round trip whatever I've done back into my film strip here, and there it is. And I could now work on that further, add more adjustments to that black and white that I did out in black and white effects too. So that's that. Uh, gosh, we're almost out of time, but I really want to cover, and I got permission up ahead, infrared. So how about infrared? How does Topaz handle that? Well, really well. Once again, this is a raw file, and it's got that red cast to it, which is what you're going to get when you're shooting infrared. So I decided to go ahead and, and give this a try. So let's add a black and white layer. Not bad. I'm not going to do anything. I just want that to make it black and white. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a basic adjustment. And let's go ahead and do some of these things that I would normally do. OK, let's do that. Let's bring those shadows down a little bit more. Not too shabby, right? So by just making it a black and white adjustment and then affecting uh, the sliders in a, I'm sorry, black and white adjustment in the, in the basic panel, I'm able to do a pretty good job. But guess what? You've got more tools. Watch this. Remember that nice kind of glow we would get with a film version? Let's go down here and what was I looking for? Radiance. Let's hit radiance. Uh, I'm going to bring the saturation way down. And then I'm going to go in here under the custom and hit soft glow. Whoops, sorry. Now I'm going to bring um, now. So soft glow made it look like this. That's not what I was looking for. But by playing around and reducing the saturation in the soft glow preset, I've got this really cool glow, which just sings in my mind for, for a, a uh, infrared image. And same thing, I can adjust the strength of that look, bring it down so it's maybe not quite so in your face. And as I do that, I'm blocking up some of my shadows. Not a big deal. Just go back to my basic adjustment, bring those shadows back up this direction because that other adjustment is affecting it more than I would like. Maybe bring some of my exposure back, being careful not to blow out my highlights. So I think that's pretty awesome. Let me turn the, uh, hang on, bring this basic up. Let me hit the before and after on Radiance. So there it was looking reasonable, but wowza with the adding that Radiance tool to a infrared image. And the last one is texture. And then we'll be done. And then <sighs> I can take a breath. All right. So built into one of the paid upgrades to Pro is you have texture capability. So here's a great boat shot. This should be a very, if you have texture effects, this is a panel that you're very familiar with. Uh, you know, you have an opacity slider to make it uh, 100% or less. You have all of your blend modes. I like multiply. And you can adjust the brightness, contrast, detail, saturation of just the texture. That's important to know when this is a layer here, that's the texture that's being adjusted. And then I went ahead and I added some flypaper textures. I love their textures. And I went ahead and grabbed that here. So these are all these textures that come with it in the My Texture file. I added my own. I'm not going to say how to do that. If somebody has a question, we can cover that very quickly and easily. And there you go. So I have a multiply blend mode. I've got my opacity wherever I want to put it. And now I can add a texture. Real quick little tip. Go down to color strength. Let's say you like the texture, but you don't like the tonality or the color. Hit the color strength slider. As soon as you move it, another slider appears, right? If it's off, there's just one slider. If I move it to the right, I have two sliders. And now watch, I can make the color any color I want to make it. Hopefully there's a bunch of oohs and ahs out there. It'd be nice with a live audience. You're actually hearing the oohs and the ahs. That's huge, folks, that you can use any texture you want and then change the tonality of that texture is a big deal. So again, bring up a texture layer, pick what you want. I like multiply. I like to adjust the opacity. And then if you don't like the color, just go to color strength. As soon as you move it, it opens up another slider. Bring that to be as much color as you want with the strength and then change the tonality. And because I promised I'd only go to... Um, 10 till if I was going to go over. For those of you who don't have Texture Effects 2, 
what are you thinking that you should have it? It's, it's the best box of crayons ever. So let me just take a quick second. I'm going to hit reset on this. I'm going to go back up here like we did to plugins and go to texture effects. And I just want you to see a real quick tease. I've I've done two hour-long webinars for Topaz on this crazy good product. The first one went so well, people wanted to have more. Uh, there's an awful lot, and we're not going to cover much in, in two minutes here. Um, but let me just say, if you have the full-blown program, you have all these presets, which you have some of them in studio. But you can actually start from fresh. And now what you have here is you have all of these adjustments. So not only can you add texture, you can add light leaks and dust and scratches and double exports, vignette, on and on and on. So you have a, a virtual playground. And once again, I can go into my fly paper textures. I can find the texture I want. Here's my opacity slider here. Here's my multiply here. So this panel is very similar to what we were seeing before. I can quickly hover. One of the things that makes this program so great is how stinking fast it is. I click on these and I can see quickly what's going on. And then if I want to add another adjustment, it's kind of a paradigm that's just like studio, right? Now I'm using a basic adjustment. I can make this brighter. I can take the shadows down. I can change the highlights and so forth. And then if I want to add diffusion, edge blurs, and on and on and on and on, multiple textures, I can say, let me put another texture, brings up another texture, and I can add whatever I want and on and on and on. We're out of time. If, if that's you know, got you interested in texture work, I highly recommend. It's an absolute blast. And again, there's plenty of um, tutorials on uh, Topaz's website where you can learn a ton about this wonderful tool. Gosh, it looks terrible. We should at least make it look good as, as we're exiting out here, right? <clears throat> okay, so thank you for bearing with me in this very fast paced, and I apologize about my masking. I always fret that because I get it backwards every time. Even though I know black conceals, white reveals, it just seems like my brain just doesn't get it. So apologize for that little goof in the beginning. So a um, couple things. <clears throat> if you already own, just remember now, the paradigm with this new studio. Studio is free, and you get a number of adjustments. And then there are pro adjustments. And you can go pro at the bottom here. Let me get out of this. At the bottom of this page here, you can go pro with the adjustments, right? It says shop pro adjustments. So you can buy them all as one group, but it, let's say you already own Impression right now and you'd like to make the switch to Studio, you're going to get Impression for free. If you already own Clarity, you do not need to purchase it again. You will get that as a free upgrade. So fear not uh, when you make the switch to Studio and you start getting pro adjustments, you don't have to pay for those things you already own. And then I'm going to let, here I got one other thing and then after that I'll let uh, Heath take over with the, getting the pro adjustments, getting them as a pack and then if you get them, let's say they add new things as time goes on and you've already paid for the, the entire package of pro adjustments, he'll explain how that will work as it moves forward and in, in the 50% uh, discount you'll get and so forth. But before I do, if you're interested in my work, the best way to follow me is if you go to my website, barclayphoto.com, there'll be a pop-up box to sign up for a newsletter. I do not do anything with those emails except use them for my newsletter. And I try to send out one once a month. And in there are the locations that I lead workshops to uh, throughout the world. If you want to get, as you'll read in that newsletter, if you'd like to come with me on a workshop, the best thing to do is look at what's going on in 17, 18, and 19. I have all three of those years there. If you have interest, just ask to be put on a to-be-notified list of something like, for instance, in 2019, like Scotland, that you're interested in. That guarantees that you'll be on the list of people who get notified first when that workshop is going to be officially announced and you have a much better chance of, of getting on any of those future workshops. They tend to, I'm very blessed, and I, they tend to fill up really, really fast. So that's the best way is get on the newsletter list, and we'll be happy to keep you informed as to what's going on. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Heath for some questions and for him to explain the, the pro adjustments clearly because they've upgraded that to make it a lot easier. And then we need to find out who won stuff here, which is great. And then my... Um, my website and my Instagram and Facebook information will be on the screen here shortly as well. I'd love to see you in each of those venues. Thanks for listening. I, I hope there was some benefit 
here today. Heath? I am here. So Good. what should we do first, questions or show the winners? Um, questions. Okay. Uh, we have a bunch of questions about um, how the pro uh, – First off, how to get your plugins into Studio. John, since you're already there, could you click on the plugins item at the top? Yep. If you have any plugins that you already have installed on your machine and you install Topaz Studio, those will automatically populate right here in this list. If you're not seeing that, you can always submit a help uh, ticket at the help.topazlabs.com help center. That's help.topazlabs.com. You can submit a ticket there. We've got a little script we can run that will get these all in the right place for you so that you can see the plugins that you've downloaded and owned here. Now, you can see that he has Topaz Impression 2 here. It's not the exact same thing as Topaz in, uh, an Impression in Studio. Topaz Impression 2 is an external plugin. Topaz uh, Impression in Studio is, you can see him opening up right here, it's an adjustment. The benefits of this adjustment allow you to... Let's say you're working on an image and you're like, oh, like John did, if you want to add a texture or another adjustment or even clarity items through precision contrast and the HSL adjustment, you can do that here. You don't have to go into the plugin, do your work, hit OK, go back out to Photoshop, then back into your plugin. It allows you to build one-click effects using all sorts of different adjustments uh, directly within Topaz Studio. Oh, man. Perfect. Just keep coming. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Take a breath away. I hope you understand the value of that. Really a lot of value in doing that. Um, it gives you a lot more capability to build a look that you want to. And remember, when you're done with that build, make sure to hit this over the bottom right and save it as your special effect that you've just created after all that work. Um, as, uh, as is tradition, John, we don't really have any questions about your workflow. Uh, they're typically all about the new platform, which we knew they would be. Ah, um, okay. There are so many to go through. Uh, oh, can you show real quick adding an image layer? We've had people suggesting, um, like, let's say you had. Um, yep, so if, I, so if I have this up here to the right, a couple of ways, right? Image adjustment, here's image layer here, but image layer is here as well. Mm -hmm. And so all I'm going to do, if I wanted to, can I take one from here? Yeah, you can actually delete that image layer. The, the adjustment you just added. Okay. Now pick a different image and just drag and yep. drop it onto. So if you wanted here? to add an image layer, just drag and drop it onto your adjustment list. I'm sorry, not the canvas. Okay, here. Got drag it. and drop it right there. It'll there create a new image layer for you. If you had a signature or a watermark or something you wanted to add, all you'd have to do is open that in, uh, in Topaz Studio and then drag and drop it over your image. And you can make changes to it, adjust opacity, mask, uh, flip it, resize it, any Perfect. other if you want to be able to show your, uh, uh, be able to show your, your, your signature. Yep. Yeah, your cool. signature. Okay, what else? Goodness gracious, they're still coming. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my screen because I'll have a lot of people sure. asking how much is Topaz Studio, et cetera. Et cetera. Cool, let's get her done. Yep. Uh, I'm going to open another tab, change presenter. Hang with us for those winners and uh, a little bit more information, folks. Yep, just hold tight for one second. We will get that to you. Show my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, Should be on the store right now. Yeah, how come I'm not seeing it? You know, I might have pulled it off of my desktop, actually. Can you guys? All right, I'm getting yeses. All right. Good. All Thank you, you, folks. <laughs> all you need to do to get Topaz Studio is go to web.topazlabs.com and click this little free download button. That will download the live version for you. If you want to know what you get for free, just click right here. This shows you all the tools that you get for free. You want to know what the pro adjustments are, you can click right here. That will show you links to all the pro adjustments just for a little sample of what you get for free. Um, literally every single tool that we have, including masking, raw support, lens correction, cropping, rotating, all those tools, all of the free adjustments, all the masking, blend modes, opacity, all those changes, every single one-click effect that's in the application that has been created and shared or has been created by Topaz that's all free to use, unlimited undo, redo, all free to use, and any of these 10 basic adjustments. Uh, the only thing you have to pay for in the application is right here. If you want any of these pro adjustments, they're available in our store. You can buy them each individually uh, for full price. So if I wanted to buy the black and white adjustment, that's $14.99. If I wanted to buy the bloom adjustment, it's $4.99. We also have the option to go pro. Basically, consider it the same thing as our uh, complete collection was to the plug-in version. This is to Topaz Studio. 
this is every single pro adjustment that you're missing. You buy them all at once and save 50%. Now you can see here the HSL color tuning that I have is $0. That's because on my account I already own this. Since I already own it, I'm not going to be charged for it. If I go here and add this to the cart and then go to my cart, that will still be $0. So the GoPro option always adapts based on what you already own. That means if you bought the Pro Pack, this is basically the Pro Pack, but we had confusion, so we tried to, to uh, simplify it. If you own the Pro Pack already, we've added a few adjustments, and you want to get those adjustments, just buy the Pro Pack again. If you've bought it when we had 14 adjustments, we've got 16 now. You'll <coughs> you'll only Poor have guy, to he hasn't the, been feeling good. Bear uh, with him. You'll only have to pay for the two adjustments you're missing, and you'll still get the 50% discount. That means if I bought all of these except for one adjustment a la carte, and I wanted to buy Edge Exposure, that was the only one I'm missing, and I add GoPro, it's going to charge me $2.50 for the Pro Pack because the only thing I'm missing is this adjustment, and I still get it at a 50% discount. So if you Perfect. if you want the Pro Pack, it's the best value. You can see right here it's half off. Uh, that will probably not be the price that you see because I already own a couple under this account. Uh, if you've already bought the Pro Pack and you want to get the best deal on the new adjustments that have been added, just buy the Pro Pack again and go to the cart. You'll see every adjustment that you already own, $0. The ones that you don't, you get half off. So hopefully Perfect. that explains that a little bit. Yeah, I, I think that works really well. And um, If you'd like to follow John, you can always do so at BarclayPhoto.com. That's his personal website or his Facebook page at Facebook.com forward slash John Barclay Photo. His Instagram at John Barclay Photo or his Twitter at JH Barclay. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me specifically by emailing us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And you can sign up for upcoming webinars. I've got a few people scheduled. I'm waiting on their information, and then I will have that populated. That's at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. John, thank you so much for sticking around. I'm sorry, everybody, we had to kind of speed through this. Oh. Right. So take advantage of that, and you'll enjoy these tools immensely. And uh, Heath, go get some rest, drink lots of fluids, <laughs> and uh, don't get anybody else sick. Thanks, um, folks. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for coming. Appreciate it. Jo John, we'll see you again on a future webinar, man. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.